Hello, Lindsay Hoffmeister here on the Sports Channel. Usually we show clips of sports and the inter interesting things, but today we're going to talk about the significance of physics involved in a sport. Today's sport is volleyball. Yes, it is the best sport in the world, and most, well, a lot of people think all it is it is a bump set spike, but it's really not. So we're going to talk about a few physics things in it. Okay. Velocity. Velocity is displacement in a given time. Velocity is speed in given direction. Velocity is how fast the ball moves from one place to another. The equation to find velocity e equal is velocity equals distance over time. Okay. Get out a piece of paper. Three, two, one. Okay. I'm going to give you a problem. During a volleyball game, a player runs six meters in three seconds. What is his velocity? Again, the formula is V equals D over T. So V equals six over three. So the answer is V equals two meters per second. Good job. Okay, another important part of volleyball is gravity. In volleyball, gravity affects everything. The players, the net, and especially the ball. Without gravity, the ball would never come down. It would continue in the same direction in which the force was implied. Projectile motion involves gravity. Gravity is what makes the ball return to the ground. Now I'm going to try to show you a picture so look really, really closely. Okay, it's not working. So just imagine you see a ball and the path it is traveling in the air. The ball resists gravity. Gravity is always affecting it though. And moves in a horizontal upward motion until gravity slows it down. The ball then will fall to the nearest solid. Okay, the next word is Potential energy. Potential energy is stored in energy that has the potential to transfer into kinetic energy. When the ball is hit into the air, it gains potential energy until it begins to fall. The equation for potential energy is potential energy equals mass times free fall acceleration times height. So, when the ball is going up, it gains potential. When it's up at the climb the top, it transfers from kinetic to potential. Then it goes down and gains kinetic. So gains potential, transfers from kinet kinetic to potential, gains kinetic. Good job. Okay. Speaking of kinetic, kinetic energy is energy being used to carry out a task of work. Kinetic energy depends on an object's mass and speed. The equation for kinetic is kinetic energy equals half mass times velocity 2. Here's a problem. If a volleyball has a mass of 10 grams and while in motion its velocity is 5, what is its kinetic energy? Again, the formula is kinetic energy equals 1 half mass times volume 2. Zach, what is it? No. Um, Howard? No. Uh, you in the back. Oscar? Okay, um, hopefully you got it. It was 125. Good job. All of you. Okay. Now everyone be ready for the next one. Okay. When a force causes displacement, to an object, work is done to that object. In order to for work to be done, it must meet two standards. The first is the object must move when force is applied to it. The second is the object must move in the direction that force has been applied to it. For example, if you tried to move a boulder with all your might and put a lot of energy into pushing it, if the boulder doesn't move, it is not considered that you did work. 
In a volleyball game, a lot of work is done because the volleyball is continuously being hit around the court in all different directions. The formula is work equals force times distance. Here is a problem. If a player applies a force of 75 newtons to a volleyball and hits it 5 meters into the court, how much work has been done? Again, the formula is work equals force times distance. Ms. Hout, what is it? It is 375. Okay, I hope you guys learned physics on volleyball. Because I sure did. Okay, bye.